Well, hey friends, welcome back to Waterview Mountain. As you can see, we're not at the mountain and we didn't get a live mule, we got a Kawasaki mule. So, if it's your first time joining us, thanks for being here. Uh, we, we, we like to share our journey as we move from here in suburbia up to what we call Waterview Mountain. Uh, you can check out some of our other videos and uh, see the work that we're doing up there in order for us to get up there. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back. We enjoy it. We sh we're absolutely blessed to be able to share our journey with you uh, as, as we prepare this house here in suburbia uh, for sale uh, and we move up to Waterview Mountain where we plan on building our dream cabin. So uh, enough of me talking, just to talk. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this Kawasaki mule. So let's walk and talk. So what did we get? We got the Mule Pro FXT. It's got the elect, uh, electric power steering and it's the LE uh, version, which I'll explain what some of that means to you uh, here in a minute, kind of as we do a walk around. Uh, as you can see, it comes with the hard top. So why did we go with the Mule? We looked at other brands, right? We looked at the big popular ones um, and they just didn't feel the need for what we needed. Uh, the big the big thing for us was that this is a six seater that can convert into a three seater. So this seat slides up um, and it still has the tilt bed so we can use it if it's if it's just Sean and I. We can roll these seats up. We have plenty of cargo space in the back for whatever we need. Um, and if we need to ferry people up and down, because as you know the terrain at the mountain is not great. So if we have someone to come to visit. We can just jump in this, drive down the mountain, pick them up, and bring them back up the mountain. Um, so that convertible portion that we'll go over here in a minute was really the one of the big sellers for us. Also, just the history of the mule. Uh, great products, great reviews. Everything that I've read is just a phenomenal working machine. I don't need something that I'm going to race up and down the mountain in uh, because that's, that's not what we're going to do. We need it to work. So just like the live mule, this mule is literally a workhorse. So let's talk about some of the features. I had to write them down because there are a lot. Um, let's start with the wheels. This wheel package on the on the uh, 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 FXT EPS LE, it's a uh, 26 inch wheels, gives us about 10 and a half, 10.2 inches of clearance. So again, I'm sorry, I have to read off the sheet. Um, comes with an 812 cc uh, motor, three cylinder, four stroke, 48 foot pounds of torque. Uh, another big reason we went with this model as opposed to say the 4010 trans that does the same kind of function uh, is the, the capacity in the bed. So total cargo capacity is 1,616 pounds, including passengers. They say though if it's if you just have three passengers, you can put a thousand pounds in the back. If you have six passengers. You can put about 350 pounds in the back. So that was that was one big selling point for us. Also, the towing capacity is 2,000 pounds. So we get us a little trailer. We hook it up. Uh, we want to drag some, some trees out of the woods before we buck them up. We can just hook it up. We can drag it out. We got 2,000 pounds there. Uh, also, has front and rear disc brakes. It's got the wishbone suspension. So it gives us a little bit more gr ground clearance. We got about, like I said, 10.2 inches. Um, of ground clearance. The other big bonus for this is the overall length is 133 inches, but the wheelbase from front to rear is only 92.3 inches. So a shorter wheelbase helps us not get stuck as we're traversing over some of those swales and other things that you've seen in some of our other videos, uh, like this video here of us uh, renting a mini excavator. So. So all of that kind of played into my research. It took me literally a year to research all of this and figure out which one we wanted. I didn't necessarily want to go with the LE version, but thanks to Rona, these are, these are very hard to find. So um, forget about finding a used one. I looked all over the place. The ones I did find that were used were just beat to all oh, heck. Um, so we ended up having to go with a new one. But absolute uh, beast already had her out on the mountain did some work uh, another video we did 
Uh, you can probably check that out here if I finish it by the time I post this video. Uh, we had some, some trees fall down, so we took her up there just to break her in. We still haven't hit our 20-hour break-in period yet, um, but we'll get there. Another big bonus with the Kawasaki compared to other models, it's got a 36-month uh, warranty. It's a limited warranty, but it's still 36-month warranty. Uh, as opposed to some have six months, some have 12 months. Nobody else has a 36-month warranty. Just Kawasaki. All right, let's go through this real quick, and let me show you what I'm talking about with this this uh, transformation that the mule can go through. It's it's real simple. Right here, we just have a clip, one on each side, that holds the seat down. You pop that bad boy up. There's a little grab handle right here. You flip the seat up. Easy enough. Then you pop this off. The other side's already loose. Well, it's 10% rule, I guess. You gotta be 10% smarter than what you're working with. Ah, that's gotta be up all the way. Now I know. Slides forward. Pop into place. Lock this down. Lock that down. Now all of a sudden, again, sorry I gotta read the notes. So we just went from 22 by 54 by 11 size uh, cargo box to a 43 by 54 by 11. So We've, we've given ourselves another 20 inches, and as you can see, let's walk around here and take a look. As you can see, that's a pretty impressive storage area. So we still have room for three people up front, and we still have plenty of space back here for whatever we're going to haul around. And it's, you see, it took me all of about 30 seconds after I figured out how to do it, how to do it. So there you have it. So another great feature is when it's in this configuration when we have the full bed this top that came with it flips up we just have a strap here with a clip this top flips forward it's got a handle right here and you got your fully functional dump bed then this also gives you access to your engine bay uh, for any maintenance that you need to do adding oil uh, and then I'll show you on the other side where the dipstick is and the and the air filter uh, plenty, of, plenty of space, easy enough to lift it, tilt it, and then just put it back down. Flip your top over. Put your strap back on. Bob's your uncle. There you go. And then to transform this back, you see I have these up. And it's got a hook here that also hooks. Uh, so you got to push those all the way up. Uh, I got this undone. I got the other side undone. You just come back here. Pull it back, lock it into place. Well, put the seat down. And there you go. Easy enough for one person, a little easier with two people, but still not difficult to, to handle. All right, now let's talk about our control panel here. So, pretty straightforward. Turn the ignition on couple great features we have with this of course it's got the continuous variable transmission so we have reverse neutral high and low uh, it's got a turf mode which we're in right now it's two-wheel drive uh, without the differential lock so if I drive around here on the grass I'm not going to tear it up if you want to lock the differential though in two-wheel drive you just click that lock you hear it click now it's actual both wheels are turning but it will tear up the grass and of course we have our selector switch here for two-wheel drive the four-wheel drive we have two different sets of lights uh, we have standard halogen we got um, low beams and high beams and then we have LED lights as well and they also have low beams and high beams so pretty pretty slick pretty bright at night uh, it'll be hard to appreciate during the day then on our display here um, of course we have our speedometer uh, we have our fuel gauge uh, odometer down here so we have uh, seven miles we click through it it gives you your trip 
trip A and trip B, and then it gives us our hours. So we are at 2.0 hours right now. It also gives us our indicator right here for two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And then, as you see, uh, we'll start over here. Uh, it's got our oil pressure warning light. It's got our uh, water temperature warning light. It's got our seatbelt indicator. So crazy thing built in. Uh, if you don't have the seatbelt buckled, you can only go eight miles an hour. Uh, so as once we turn that on, you'll see here, continuous variable transmission indicator, uh, EPS warning right there, parking brake is on. It tells you if you're in neutral uh, or in your, you're in reverse. Um, so nice, easy, clear display to see. Uh, Got to step, put my foot on the brake in order to start it. Let's do that. As you can hear, not super loud. Uh, it's 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 loud, but it's I don't know, 50 decibels, maybe 70. Uh, a couple little storage containers here. A couple chargers, standard cigarette outlet chargers. And then of course, way over there. Let's just turn so you can see. How about that? Here's the chargers, and then here's a the glove box. Decent sized glove box, not huge, uh, but but big enough for what we need. All right, now moving around to the passenger side. Here's our fuel tank. Uh, what I say, seven, seven point nine gallon fuel tank. So again, a little bit bigger than the 4010 Trans. About comparable with most of the other ones. Obviously, it comes with the doors. And then here's how you access. There's a clip here. There's a clip here, and you just pop this off. Here's how you access your battery, uh, your air filter right here and then your dipstick for your oils right back there. Um, so just flip the seat up, makes it pretty painless. You got a couple of drains here uh, for that as well. Um, so easy access uh, to uh, all of that stuff. All right, so let's talk about some negatives because there are gonna be some negatives. One, it's, it's about four grand more than the 4010 Trans Mule. I think the juice is worth the squeeze on that though. Uh, for the ground clearance, the flexibility, uh, all the EPS stuff, it's just, like I said, been a solid machine all, all the way around. Another big negative is this whole space here. As you can see, it's just a big empty space. Underneath there is your transmission. There's some lines going back and forth. However, if I think if Kawasaki was thinking outside the box, they could have used that as additional underseat storage. Now, of course, they make boxes and things to go under there. However, that's more money. Same thing at the front, uh, there's uh, an access panel to get to the uh, radiator and your radiator fluid. Again, lots of space underneath there that I think that the uh, Kawasaki folks could have utilized in a little bit better manner to have for, for additional storage for, uh, you know, just little knick-knack paddy wax or whatever. Uh, it's only got two cup holders, one on each side. Not a big deal. I don't plan on drinking and driving. so. Don't really need the cup holders. Moving to the back seat, as you see, there's the there's the motor, and again, additional space right here. That's just empty space. Could have been used for a small box or some additional underseat storage, like I said, uh, tools, whatever you want to put in it. I think that would have been a great idea by Kawasaki to do that. So maybe we'll jerry rig something up in the future and uh, see if we can't utilize this space a little bit better. So as I mentioned, we spent about a year trying to decide what we were going to do. When I saw old Maggie Mule, I, I knew I knew she was meant to come home with us. So a, around our area, within a 60 mile radius, there are five different Kawasaki dealerships. Uh, and we decided to go with the local uh, closest one, Extreme Power Sports in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, absolutely great uh, salesman, no pressure. I just walked in, told him what I was looking for. They didn't even have old Maggie here put together yet. They went ahead and threw her together, uh, got her all serviced up, filled up with fluids, and uh, we took her for a little test spin. Absolutely great experience. If you're interested in one of these, you're in our area, Columbus, Georgia area, go see Josh at Extreme Power Sports. I guarantee he's gonna hook you up. Absolutely great, great experience. All right, let's just go for a quick little trip around the neighborhood and see how she sounds and see how she does. They say she'll get up to about 55, but we haven't reached that 20 hour break in period yet, so I'm not trying to max her out just yet. Old Maggie needs to go nice and slow. So I don't know if you can appreciate, but it's not super loud. I mean, I can hear myself think. I was able to have a conversation with someone the other day. Do 
So there you have it. Just a, a real quick run through of the Mule Pro FXT, newest addition to the Waterview Mountain family. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informative. Maybe if you're looking for a side-by-side, -side, uh, it helped you uh, make an informed decision about what you're getting yourself into. Uh, like I said, for us, this was, was a clear front runner from the beginning. Uh, we just waited. Like I said, I waited about a year before I pulled the trigger. So as always, it's an absolute blessing for us to be able to share our journey with you as we progress from here in suburbia up to Waterview Mountain. We appreciate you checking us out. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, if it's your first time here, uh, look uh, this way for the, for the next video or the last video, whichever. Uh, we let YouTube decide what they're going to throw up there. Um, so check it out. Follow along with us on our journey. Uh, it's, it's really been uh, a good time for all of us. So uh, as always, be safe. We'll see you next time.